This channel is not intended for children. Please kickstart responsibly. Hey everybody. So this is Kickstarter's last chance to have me help them take your Christmas money. We're going to have a couple campaigns that popped in right at the end and then we'll do some more stuff that's coming up for January. This is a little bit of a shorter um, one with about half the size as a typical episode would be, which is cool. Um, and, uh, you know, just as always, you can click on the descriptions in the bottom and that'll take you to the jump links. You can jump ahead to whatever it is you're looking for. It's kind of scattered around this time. Um, last time was super dice heavy. This has that kind of thing. There's a little bit of RPG stuff and just a handful of board games. So uh, I hope you enjoy it. Click through and uh, do all the like, comment, share, subscribe, whatever stuff. If you want to leave holiday wishes for all the other uh, viewers, you can do that too. Be happy. First up is a board game from a publisher that always seems to have something on Kickstarter, and this is Runestones by Queen Games. They have the Enchanted Forest expansion, but you can pick up the game also if you uh, so choose, and uh, if it's something you enjoy. A lot of folks seem to have, uh, they've got reviews from Board Game Geek and Rado and uh, Man vs. Meeple and all these other folks that uh, seem to have enjoyed the game. You can check out on their page and uh, all the other cool stuff that they keep coming out with. They seem to be out at least one game a month, uh, some expansions, all kinds of stuff. Uh, it feels, to a degree, like they're one of the biggest game <laughs> publishers out there because they definitely have a lot of titles. Then we have 52 Dragons, and this, honestly, to me, the way they describe it sounds like Bears vs. Babies, but with dragons. You're taking different components from the dragons, adding them all together, and trying to make a super dragon to fight the other people that are in the game. It's kind of cool. Um, you don't really get to build your own dragon in a lot of different things. You don't really customize it. Um, basically, every other dragon game picks something that is either from Tolkien or that D&D has going, and the, you know, just a variation on that. This is uh, interesting in that you kind of uh, get to uh, you know, have a little more involvement in uh, how it's created. It's uh, got pretty good little artwork, uh, very much a CG created, not necessarily something that you would see, um, you know, uh, not quite like what you would see in Magic the Gathering or uh, other card types of card games, uh, di different feel, things pop a little more, the colors in the background uh, also have uh, a lot of saturation and all that. Uh, it's just a different way of feeling about things. So take a quick look if dragons are your thing and if you want, I think this is a uh, two-player game, um, but uh, yeah, that doesn't mean you can't uh, get more friends involved. Speaking of D&D, Legends of Novus Adventures, the Cosmatics Keep, this is kind of a new world that these guys have been trying to create in this Legends of Novus uh, line, and it runs off of the 5e rules, but it's like a, a total reskin. Um, this particular one-shot adventure has four to five players from levels four to five playing through. Uh, if you're looking for a new world and you want to be a part of their development as they go through it, I like the idea that they're putting out adventures at least to the point where they can get some feedback on what their world is and they can uh, adjust it as they go along and make it as fun as possible for people and gain uh, a lot of uh, new fans in the process by and also keeping the price down uh, quite a bit. So uh, there's lots of good reasons for the approach that they're taking. Enjoy that. Um, as far as the world itself, you'll have to check it out and see if it's for you. Take a look also, bottom left, you see the uh, character sheets and all that. Those look really neat. It's a pretty good design. It does engage you. It's going to be hard to pencil stuff in, right? But, you know, that maybe that's not too bad of an issue. Um, take a look at how they're putting things together and how they're putting their own little spin on uh, on D&D 5e. You might enjoy it. Then we have a game about strategy. This is Trade Secret, the board game. This is about competing companies, and the components are fairly simple. It looks like basically it's just the standard game crafter stuff that you come out with, and you have uh, cards that give you um, different things that uh, that you can perform, different actions you can go through. What it looks like to me is uh, when I was in business school, they made us try this one game about making a shoe company, and then you had all these different uh, factors of adjusting prices and how you how many you would manufacture certain styles and different stuff like that but um, it was rather limiting to me because what I wanted to do is move all of the uh, the factories to Antarctica and then enslave all of the penguins to do the work for me rather than pay anyone while everyone else was like shifting to Malaysia and whatnot 
they didn't like my strategy and obviously they didn't let me complete the uh, the task because you know they're just not able to think as far ahead as me penguins work for fish fish are free these people come on but anyway if you want to sit around the table and uh, argue those same type of things uh, back and forth with your friends uh, about strategies and other things that can uh, can work back and forth trade secret may be uh, just the cutthroat business game for you then we have something that is named a little strange for me because it's meanders and meanders means to just wander around and if you're wandering around then you wouldn't have a map but that's what these are our maps they show you where you're at so it's a little bit different um, Chris McDermott this is his fourth series artworks looks great uh, you can buy a bunch of different versions of it Reuse them however you need to, uh, based on the different structures, and use them for any game you've got, as long as uh, the scale matches what you're you're playing in. Um, I don't necessarily think that uh, they're going to match every miniature, but uh, close enough, and you'll be able to enjoy the the game as much as possible. Lots of different maps have popped up in lots of different Kickstarters, and uh, they're all great. Uh, some are better than others, so it really is just a matter of your taste. This could make things a lot easier for you to slap something nice and colorful down on the table and get to the nitty-gritty of storytelling as opposed to having to draw maps all the time or put things out on your uh, dry erase boards. Um, I don't see anything dry erase about these, but you could probably still laminate them and then you'd be able to mark it up however you want with uh, regular dry or wet erase markers. Leaving the teens behind and moving into the 2020, this is the Tombstone Crits. This is 3D printable stuff, so you can get dice boxes, uh, or a graveyard style, or, or tombstone style uh, dice tower. Um, it's kind of up to you how you want to do it. And obviously, this is all FDM. This is not something you're going to use an SLA printer for. Uh, for the durability and you know the uh, brittleness of the photo resins, and uh, you, you just wouldn't use that kind of print system. You're going to use the deposited stuff with PLA or ABS. And... Uh, there's some concerns when it comes to PLA and ABS regarding painting. You're going to want to go in with uh, high grit sandpapers and some fillers and uh, sand off all the, the edges and, and uh, try to get as many of the scan lines out as possible. They're not scan lines. What am I talking about? The, the layer lines. That's the word I'm looking for. Layer lines. But uh, it shouldn't be too much work. Um, it, you don't have to print it out in black like this. Uh, black actually might make the uh, the look of the layer lines worse if you did it in gray or something else. You might be able to get away with just using uh, the printout, but uh, otherwise it'd be a fun project to doing all the sanding and stuff. And we have one of the campaigns I actually like the most of this episode. This is Rise of the Minions because they have so many different interesting minion types, and minions do really make it work. Um, you can have whatever personality you want on whatever necromancer, but they really tell you about themselves and the world that they keep and the effect that they're having on the world by the minions that they put out there. So you can see you have the, the spell book that talks back to you. You could have little gargoyle guys. You could have uh, these crescent moon shaped face people, um, depending on whatever it is. There were some elementals. There's some stuff that looks like uh, the Stranger Things guys. All kinds of neat little um, minions. I mean, there's no other way to describe it. They uh, can offer a lot of different personality types uh, to the, the, the gameplay on the table. And if you're a GM, really give you some, some play space to, uh, to mess around with the uh, other players and do different crazy things. If you're a painter, then even better. I mean, lots of different options. You can paint them up in certain styles, maybe put factions against each other. So much opportunity for storytelling uh, with these kind of guys. Take a look at what they're offering. Paul Smith just happens to have a, a lot of uh, interesting sculpts. Way more than what you see here. Then we have a bit of a preview piece. This is the Bust of Librarian for a future board game called The Astrologers. Leonardo da Vinci, I don't know if he really looked like this. I don't know how accurate it is. Mainly we see him as an older man um, with the beard and all that. So here he is as a younger man. Maybe. Um, it does look like it'd be interesting to paint, give you a challenge. It comes in different sizes, um, especially for skin tones in the face. So, uh, yeah, if you're looking for that, otherwise I think you would get this if you play the, uh, or got the a game when it came out. It says here it's going to be limited edition. That could just be the, uh, 
type of printing or the size of printing uh, for this one. And uh, it comes in a couple different uh, sizes. 35 pounds, what's that like, $40 is uh, not terrible, but uh, depends on if you're into astrologers or not and you really need a new bust. Otherwise, you could get busts from playing um, World of Smog, the first game, on her gentleman's or master, something about her majesty, um, on her majesty's service or something like that. And uh, the gentlemen that come in that are also busts that you could play and you can get it probably for about a whole game for about the same price. Sorry, I think I just got distracted. I, I saw Brie Larson on uh, Jimmy Kimmel doing a monologue, and, and uh, I don't know, I, I can't talk anymore. I don't know what's going on. Speaking of Unsettled, we have uh, Unsettled the Board Game. This is about planetary planetary exploration. I can say words. I'm going to keep trying. And uh, you can buy these extra box sets, and they let you check out different planets. So if you were to play No Man's Sky or something like that, or even Spore, and you just wanted to go boldly into new types of planets and discover new things and new challenges and basically i think the way that it is set up is each planet has all new uh quests and that's basically the the concept of uh, how it runs you have a core box and then you go planet to planet and you can pick stuff up from there take a quick look at it uh and see if this is the type of space exploration that you're in the market for because there are a ton of different options uh, for space exploration and not everybody's gonna find it in every game but this might be the one for you then we have tentacles tentacles tabletops and tentacles this is a brand new magazine so if you wanted something other than dragon uh, scribe or any of the other um, many RPG magazines that are out there and you're looking for something different in a different voice take a look at what these guys are putting out um, you can get a sample uh, it's already funded, which is nice, uh, and just see if uh, it's the type of thing that uh, you've been looking for, the type of stories and discussions and other concepts that they've been adding. Um, if it says here, if it funded in 48 hours or less, uh, everybody would get something free. It funded in one day, so if you back it now, you'll get that free thing too. Just figure to give you a heads up. Originally, I thought this one here, the Baba... I'm going to try to say it. Bavakakra. Bavakakra? Bavakakra. Let's go with Bavakakra. Or Bavakakra. I don't know. Uh, I don't know any Buddhists in reach that I can ask. Uh, but anyway, uh, I thought it was just a regular playing card set. It is not. It is a full game. Um, it's just... Uh, the way that the artwork is laid out made me think that maybe it was just a regular playing uh, card set. Anyway, it has uh, Buddhist principles, and that's what it is based on. So you have karma, you have good and bad, and that's the basic mechanic of the game. You're trying to uh, get points off the good ones and get rid of the bad ones. So if you're into Buddhist philosophy, if you want to show somebody else about Buddhist philosophy and you want a game to bring that in, or you're a fan of the artwork, and the art does look pretty neat when I went to the Asian Museum, oh god, this was a while back, I think it's like six, seven years ago, in uh, the Smithsonian, saw a lot of cool artwork that was very similar to this, and uh, you know, it just, everybody has their style and things that they get gravitate towards, uh, if this is the thing for you, then, uh, you know, maybe you'll be able to show other folks your philosophy or learn more about it uh, as you play a game. Then we got something a little closer to home. For me, this is the Vegas slot machine card game. Because uh, I play the slots when I go to Vegas. Because uh, they'll take like a nickel. And uh, sometimes that's what I have to spend. Anyway, um, you have a randomization function. So you can shuffle cards and do that. As opposed to the spinning wheels. And uh, match things up and play the card game. So it uh, makes it neat where otherwise you might not be ha able to afford or have access to a slot machine but you still want some type of fun and, and know how things match up and get extra points or whatever the case is and that's where this comes in um maybe you can play it with uh, your grandma your parents your retirees wherever those folks are that are always on their their way to uh, a casino of some type in your family uh that otherwise uh, you know the harmless type not the gambling you know degenerate don't play this with them because this is going to make it worse but uh, you know just good old grandma you can play and uh, and have a good time then we have Black Oaks Workshop is back with Dragon Polyhedral Dice. 
Uh, I always say my critique of dice is the visibility. The blue on blue makes it difficult for me to see, but that's not the only type they have, so you should look what other things there are. But look at the dice box. Look how pretty that is. That's what uh, I keep bringing back up for Black Oak Workshop is their woodworking skills are fantastic. They come up with other products. Even the uh, the way that they stained it um, to give it that uh, aged feel, but still have that kind of metallic reflection. Everything about those dice boxes I think is beautiful. Um, maybe you agree and maybe you'll check it out. Then we have another entry into the many, many, many climate change based games I've seen over the year uh, pop into Kickstarter. This is Tipping Point. This one's a card game and you can see it is basically about city design and uh, doing what you can to uh, prevent disasters. Uh, weather cards pop in, change things up for you. Population changes, those are the citizen cards, and then your decisions on how you design the city. Um, a lot less graphic than I've seen on, uh, like you don't want to have a bunch of crying animals or <laughs> um dead fish or other stuff uh that could be there but this is more like a uh, a sim city or farmville uh type of artwork which is fine um it is cool to think about uh climate change and what we can do about it but uh also think about how much of it you're going to introduce into the world if you play with your kids because uh it could be a little too much my dentist called in the middle of that one, sorry. So anyway, this is a brand new um, pro uh, project that's out there. Uh, I think this is gonna happen um, a lot more. We're gonna see a lot more smart dice. That's what these are, Go Dice. They are um, app connected and you can roll them in a game on your end and you can play with somebody uh, who's connected in another location. That part's pretty cool. Uh, since it can read, uh, various angles of how it's sitting. It has these cradles that allow you to put it inside of a D20 or a D24 if you wanted to use it that way. Um, all those are really neat options. Uh, I don't know if you're just going to use those three types. That part's up to you. Um, but the main things to keep into consideration are the games it comes with. They're fake versions of uh, Yahtzee and poker and all this other stuff. I don't know if it's going to expand out from there. Uh, a lot of people are excited to use it. A lot of people are excited to try it. I don't know if there's going to be additional um, programming for other games allowed to it or compatibility when something like uh, Tenebru uh, and other things that are coming out next year are, are going to function with it. But if you want to play Yahtzee and some version of poker and other stuff that they've got available with your friends uh, around the world, maybe uh, people in the military that are, you know, maybe when they have some time off or something, they could play with you. Uh, that you can't really do on Xbox, uh, maybe that'll help. Also in digital is Mana Crest. This is a collectible card game that they're trying to come out with that will also have a digital component that you can play with people. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't need another uh, collectible card game, so it's not for me. For you, if you're looking for something, I think it's uh, just a mix of fantasy and space. Uh, last time I looked at it, I think uh, I talked about how the artwork um, was a little on the... It isn't itself on the generic side, but it's intentionally generic, if that makes any kind of sense, to where uh, it's a little difficult to see any um, any real emotiveness or urgency of what's going on in the game uh, to really draw you into it. It's just kind of landscapes from what I can see so far. And uh, so that would be my main uh, uh, concern, other than the fact that I'm just not going to pick up another collectible card game. I stopped playing Magic. I can't even find the cards that I had anymore. So uh, if it, this is something for you and you want to try something entirely different, entirely new, take a look at how the game plays and uh, see if you want to continue to invest. For me, anything with a booster pack is just out from now on. Then we have a bunch of hand-drawn tiles and meeples and other neat stuff. Questicus, possibly for the rest of us. Um, that's what this is. It's an adventure game, so you run on the different uh, uh, areas. It doesn't have any crazy minis, anything like that, as I said. On a previous uh, entry, looks like uh, the what is it, Game Crafter? Yeah, that's the one. Uh, type of, of uh, options. Yeah, big cards though. That was one of the things in the video that kind of threw me. I don't know if it was the real size. Um, so you have these giant cards that tell you uh, who your players are. Uh, that can be kind of neat, but otherwise you just play on little tiles. 
Um, yeah, if you need a different type of adventure game, then maybe Questicus is for you. Oh, finally, something with some cool minis and a solo mode, Sanctorum, is available here. And uh, this is a co-op survival horror game. It doesn't have a ton of minis, uh, like you see in a bunch of other games. But uh, it does have a vinyl record, uh, if you're into that, <laughs> um, and other neat stuff. The, uh, the sculpts are all really cool. You can check them out spinning there. And uh, they've got some different options. Artwork is uh, what you'd expect. It's high quality. And uh, take a quick look and see if uh, the adventure is the type of adventure you want to have. But for me, I think this is uh, probably the, the coolest one I've seen so far, other than that Dragon Box. That Dragon Box was gorgeous, wasn't it? Another cool thing is Vampers. This is Vampire the Masquerade 5th Edition and a little expansion called Cults for the Blood Gods. I like the artwork, especially the one on the right. I think that's really cool looking. One on the left looks a lot like the uh, the stuff you would have seen in the 90s, I think, maybe in the 80s on uh, Vampire the Masquerade. So it very much fits within that world. Richard Thomas, I believe, is one of the guys that uh, has been coming out with a bunch of these campaigns uh, and was one of the original art directors if i'm not mistaken uh for white wolf awesome awesome uh pedigree there uh cool things going on i love world of darkness i never get to play world of darkness uh the way that i want to play it <laughs> um as uh you know I, i'm not so much into the the political side of uh the vampire stuff i, I don't think i'd be doing well in a toreador campaign or a avenger campaign but if it's just all gangrels and bruja Oh, vampires as, uh, uh, you know, animals basically close to uh, the savage side of nature, fighting some Zamitsi. Yeah, yeah, that'd be me. Then we have a neat little game about the elements. Elementals Unleashed. Not the fire, ice elementals. No, 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 no. Not D&D elementals. This is the real elements. Hydrogen, helium, lithium, all that fun business in a card game with little Pokemon looking artwork. Uh, it'll help you remember things. That's kind of the point. It was made by a nice scientist out there in the UK. And uh, what she wanted to do is to have a fun way for uh, people to interact with science. And I think that she has accomplished it. Um, you can give it a quick look, see if it's the type of game for you. Uh, I think that uh, it would have made chemistry a lot easier uh, to be introduced to this type of stuff earlier in life rather than picking up in high school. And, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, if it's in if you're coming from England, they call certain, uh, elements different aluminum instead of aluminum, right? So things are, are a little bit worded differently. I don't know if she's going to have it, uh, written in American or what she's going to have it written in, uh, UK English, but, uh, either way, I think, uh, getting kids involved and, uh, you know, even if they're in high school or even if you're in college, help reinforcing, uh, each one of these things is uh, might even help your chemistry scores take a quick look at how she's got it set up that's it for me this episode i think i'm still the only one that puts out uh, kickstarter videos or videos of kickstarter campaigns for both board games and uh rpg stuff especially the stuff that is currently on the market i know there's uh, tantrum house and others that try to tell you what's coming up but uh there's no links if they're coming up right there's no way to check them out so if you want to keep coming back here, I'll be here pumping these videos out weekly. And, uh, you know, if you want to like, comment, or subscribe to help other folks see it, when you hit the like button, other folks are more likely to see the channel and uh, hopefully get some use out of it. And if you've gotten some use out of it, maybe uh, your friends can too. If you hit the share button, that can help that. And uh, if you uh, otherwise just want to say which was your favorite campaigns over the year, Anything you want to say that's coming up, all that kind of cool stuff is great. I think the next video I'm going to do will be like the first, very first video I did of the series, which was just about all of uh, the things I had coming out in 2019 that I had purchased and predictions I was making. So I think I'm going to just talk about what those happened with all those predictions. So look forward to that next week. I don't think there's going to be a lot of campaigns just like this time, but uh, there was enough for, you know, 20 minutes of, uh, of viewing. Why not? You guys have a happy holidays and all that. I'll catch you guys just before New Year's. And uh, yeah, I think I'm either going to go watch Mandalorian or uh, watch the uh, the Brie Larson monologue again. Because for some reason I can't remember 
anything she said. I, I might have to watch it a couple more times. I, I don't know why. I, something's distracting. You guys have a good one.